That'll get twinkle. Stop it. You're a little bit racist. Well, you're a little bit too. I guess we're both a little bit racist. Admitting it is not an easy thing to do. But I guess it's true. Oh, hey folks, this is Rish. And this is Big. And this is the final part of our superhero conversation. Take it away. You take it away. I'm really looking forward to seeing Thor and Captain America and, and Green Lantern and to a much, much, much lesser extent X-Men this summer <laughs> because these are things that I, I've loved or you're, really like. You know you're going to love the X-Men the most because of that. The fact that Bring you're it really, on. really, really expecting it to suck, no matter how sucky it is, it's going to be better than you expect it to be. And you're going to come out of this summer going, you know, X-Men was the one I liked the best. Well, that, that's win-win, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, okay, of those four movies, and this is a conversation we've had before, but why I'm saying it on the air, I'm not. Of those four movies, which are you most looking forward and least looking forward to? Hmm. Probably Green Lantern the most, to tell you the truth. I think it may just be because it's a DC film that's a major character that's not Superman or Batman. It's not... You know, a, a very lesser known graphic novel like Road to Perdition or something like that. It's a major character, but they, they don't do any of the others. They just do Superman and Batman and they won't venture out. And so that's because they don't believe in these characters. Yeah. yeah. So they're actually trying to do the Green Lantern thing. And I'm, I'm actually looking forward and I hope it works out. Unfortunately, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I'm bound to be disappointed because I want it to be really good. And to tell you the truth, probably X-Men after that just because I l like the X-Men a lot. You, have you seen that trailer? No, I haven't seen it yet. I, I could I, watch it right now. Do you want to? You can pause it. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Do you care? Bow, wow, wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. Wild Wild West. So what we were talking, what were we talking about before? I, I, I had zero interest in seeing X Men First Class, but then that trailer came out and I l saw it and I thought, oh, that looks like it might be a good movie. Yeah, it actually does. And so, you, so you said, you know, that's the one that you're going to like the the most because you have the lowest expectations. I wish there was a way to keep my expectations really, <laughs> really low. <laughs> right. But if I had seen Dark Knight, believing that it was going to be the greatest superhero movie of all time, that everybody was proclaiming months before it came out, mm -hmm. I still would have thought it was a good movie. That's true. Because it was. I, it I, was. I, I hope that high expectations and low expectations won't blind me from a good movie. Right. Lowered expectations only really matters when it comes to a crappy movie. When it's a good movie, it's a good movie. And if you think it's going to be good or you don't think it's going to be good, either way, it's going to be good. But when it's less good and you expect it to be, oh, well, this is going to really suck. And then there's some real worth in it here and there. Then that can just be like, oh, that was better than I thought it would be. It actually turned out all right. I don't wish I had my two hours back now. So, uh, yeah, there's that. I mean, good movies, they're just good. It doesn't matter what your expectations are. They're just good. It's the ones that are in between and the ones that are really bad that that really matters for. So, yeah, well, I guess we'll see how the uh, summer shakes out as far as superheroes go. Yeah, see, my worries have been because I, I really like Captain America and really want there to be a great Captain America movie mm -hmm. that, that, that defines Captain America the way that I define him. And that's that. Oh, my gosh. I'm setting myself up for disaster. Because you take three Captain America fans and you ask them what he's like, you might get three different descriptions. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I so want it to be that movie and be good and make me just believe that he is from an earlier time when people were good mm -hmm. and all that stuff. I, you know, that, that's, that's something that I want them to do and pull off. And, and I'm worried that because I so want that to happen, I'm setting myself up for failure. I will not like the movie. Mm -hmm. and, and with Thor, I think I've got like the opposite situation where it's like, well, I don't care about Thor. Right. I've never had any emotional connection to Thor. I like Beta Ray Bill more than Thor. <laughs> so anything they do will be fine. And that, that might not be true. You know, it may be that one of those two movies is going to be better. And I will recognize, hey, oh, this one was better than this one. I don't know. I'm 
pretty sure that that's likely. Like when, when you go back to that, and we already mentioned this movie earlier. I mean, I tell you the truth, I may not have even ever heard of this character before his film came out. I have zero connection to Daredevil. I don't care if it succeeded or don't succeed because it's not a character that I care about. I don't care if he ever has another film or what people think. And that didn't help me at all. <laughs> the movie was terrible. And I recognized it to be terrible. Okay, but in 2008, you and I saw Iron Man and Incredible Hulk together. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like the character of the Hulk and never have cared much about Iron Man. And yet, clearly... Iron Man is the better movie, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. We, right. We, we right. will recognize quality if it's there. Right. That's what I think. And you may forgive more in Thor, or maybe you'll forgive more in Captain America because of the way you feel about it. So maybe it'll be like Wolverine, for example, where thousands and thousands of people say, this is absolute crap. And you're like, eh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I've heard people say that Wolverine is on par with Batman and Robin from people that are dead serious. <laughs> and dude, they're out of their freaking minds. <laughs> dude, Batman and Robin is an atrocity. And Wolverine, if they make a sequel to it, I think it'll still do well, even if people hated Wolverine. There's, but yeah, you're right. I, I, I don't see why it is as bad as everybody says that it is bad. Mm -hmm. And maybe that makes me dumb, but you know, that's just how you might how forgive it is. more in it because you're a fan of Wolverine. I mean, what you were wearing a Wolverine T-shirt when you were in freaking grade school, so. I don't believe there were Wolverine t-shirts when I was in freaking grade school, but... Okay, middle school. Well, okay, we've talked for an hour. I'm going to continue talking then. They've never made an X-Men movie as good as the comics. Fart if you like, it's true. And as good as Spider-Man 2 is, they've never made a Spider-Man movie as good as the comics. Uh -huh. And, you, you know, it's possible that Spider-Man 2 is not as great as I remember it, just as it's probable that spider-man 3 isn't as bad as everyone remembers it i don't know i'm almost afraid to go back on there's, the a, lot, there's a lot of hot chicks as extras in spider-man 2 oh, so there's yeah, at least I that i hate that man oh i hated that and you hate hot chicks they shouldn't have been there all right <laughs> it's like when they cast christina hendrix as the voice of lois lane on that cartoon it's like dude give an <laughs> ugly girl a chance to do a freaking voice man that's just not fair there's only so many roles or so many jobs that an ugly woman can have and voiceover artist is the greatest of them all there you go and how dare they give christina hendrix that woman is a freaking goddess man that's not even <laughs> she shouldn't even exist just like thor just like cat dennings is or just like the girl texting about agreeing with cat <laughs> oh, dennings in thor is gonna say it's like there's no such thing as Christina Hendricks is. I, I may have to agree with that stupid girl and send her a text to myself. Oh my. Uh, wait, how did we get on the Oh, hot extras. <laughs> that distracted from the movie. I wondered if Sam was going through a divorce. You know, he and his wife were on the splits. And so he just cast all these model types as extras so that he could bone them. Because I know that that sort of thing happens. Mm -hmm. There was just no explanation. And yeah, there's another reason maybe I should be afraid to see Spider-Man 2 again. No, I saw it again not too long ago, just like a year. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good film. I think you'll, uh, you'll still appreciate it at least. Cool. I don't know. My favorite superhero film, and I think we've mentioned this before, is X-Men 2. And it's still, every time I see it, I'm still impressed by it. So you recognize quality when you see it, and quality is quality. You know, you're going to watch Dark Knight again, and it's still going to be good. It's still going to be uh, impressive. I don't think you need to worry. It's funny how this conversation started out being all about race, and am I racist? And it became a superhero conversation. Although, deep down, I think it was always a superhero conversation. Yeah, it kind of was. You were just worried that your feelings for superheroes made you a racist. <laughs> That's funny. Well, no, Jeff was the one that called me a racist. And he's really smart. And he's one of those people that because he's smart, he feels like there's no need for tact. <laughs> you know what I mean? He calls a spade a spade. Well, he, he says things the way he sees them. And so, you know, sometimes that can be hurtful. I know I've done that before. And said ugly things and I shouldn't have said them. But uh, do you think we'll still have a podcast when all these superhero films come out in the summer? Probably. 
We've do you got think... stories lined up for that long, so I hope so. We do. We're going to have a lot of upset authors if we don't. Well, fuck them. <laughs> well, do you think that we'll get together and, and talk about every single one of these movies? And, and if so, is that going to be part of an episode or is that going to be part of uh, That Gets My Goat? Or what, what do you think? I guess it all depends on uh, what we feel like at the time. One way or the other, though, it'll be on there. Uh, you know, it, this will be in the outtakes, I guess. But something that I've always hated about the X-Men, the Brian Singer X-Men movies, is what they did with Mystique, turning her into this reptilian thing. There's a role where you don't have to cast a supermodel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, they cast Rebecca Romaine in Which this role. as gorgeous woman alive. And they time. turn her into some creepy thing who's shapely. But yeah, but well, you don't need a good looking girl for that thing. And yeah, they cast Jennifer Lawrence, who is really, really beautiful. As Although we see her as a girl. Yeah. So I guess that's fine. But oh, geez, it would have been so much cheaper and so much easier to just paint her skin blue and give her a red wig. Jeez. Mystique in the comics is so, so hot. <laughs> just, I just still don't get that. It's like, we're going to turn her into the goblin creature. Or something. <laughs> it's like, we were really upset with the way they did the green goblin. So we're going to compensate for it. <laughs> Make in her this. the blue goblin. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they did, they did their own take on a lot of the X-Men, you know. Somebody was talking about, you know, what they did with uh, Rogue. Mm-hmm. Rogue in the uh, comics is, you know, this brash southern belle. She's outgoing. She's not what you would really expect, and maybe that's why they changed it. Not what you would really expect from somebody who cannot touch another person without causing big problems. You know, so they gave it a different take, and I guess they were doing the same with Mystique and... But it's disrespect for the source material. That's where all that came from. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, we're just going to turn Rogue into Kitty Pride because nobody's going to know the difference. It's just a funny book. F them. And uh, that sucks, man. Someday somebody's going to do Rogue right and have her as a villain. And you'll be like, whoa, what? The bad guy is Rogue? Oh, F you, man. Brian Singer's rolling in his grave. And then they'll see it and go, oh. Oh, wow, this is really, oh, this is good, man. Oh, I like this. And I'll be, you know, in my nursing home and saying, that's what it was supposed to be. You just didn't know. Oh, oh, no. And then I'll keel over. But you'll have experienced at least that one bit of joy before you died. One bit of joy. Any time that they change something that was perfectly good and they change it arbitrarily, and maybe that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Is just you cha- make a change for change's sake. It sucks. And every once in a while, they'll make the Spider-Man origin better than Stan did. But the, the, the rest of the time, you can't go wrong following the blueprint that has made people happy for decades. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess we can agree to disagree on the X-Men thing. But Logan looked like Logan. And mm-hmm. I never heard anybody say, Oh, this side bridge is stupid. You just got a bunch of shabies and you were really stupid. Because I, I would have killed them. <laughs> you would kill anybody that talked like that. That's true. <laughs> I'm actually really close to killing, killing you right now. Yeah. I wanted to kill <laughs> myself for doing now. that. My my hands just almost of their own volition flew to your throat. I had to put them in my pockets really quick. But there had to have been somebody somewhere who said... Do we really want to cover up Hugh Jackman's handsome face with all this hair? You're, you're turning him into some kind of animal, dude. And it's like, ah, do we really want to do that? Are kids going to like this guy? This guy smokes? Oh, my Lord. And the, the, he looked like Wolverine from the second you saw him. Mm-hmm. And, and hopefully forevermore, until they put a mask on him, that's what Wolverine will look like. And kids will say, oh, yeah, that's Wolverine. He's got the things on his face. The sweet hair, too. They went all out on the hair as no, well. No, that's, that's what I was talking about. The sideburns is one thing, but the hair that goes up to the points, that they actually did that. Good for them. Full it's on just, out, too. That was I can't good. hate them 100%. So it's seeing James McAvoy in X-Men First Class with hair as Xavier, are they just trying to show that he's younger? I think so. And you know what? Maybe Xavier isn't like Lex Luthor and he was bald since he was, was a boy. Say, was uh, Xavier always supposed to be bald? I don't I don't know. He was bald since the second we first were introduced to him. And even when he could walk in the past, he was still bald then. But, you know, maybe that's not a big deal. I don't know. I think that had to have been a conscious choice not to shave McAvoy's head the same as not to give the actor who plays Magneto silver hair. 
And you, you know what? Maybe that's the whole Brian Singer element again. They're like, nobody's going to believe a young man has silver hair. Nobody. 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 I know he can lift a battleship with his hand, but nobody's going to believe gray hair on a young man. We'll see how that goes. Part of me hopes that the X-Men reboot fails utterly and that they all kill themselves. But another part says, I hope it's a really good movie and it makes money and they make a bunch more of them because there's not enough good movies. At the end of the year, you know, they'll say, boy, this sure was a bad year for movies. You hear it every year. <laughs> and I guess maybe that's just because... All they make is remakes and sequels now? Well, that's true. But I guess just we've gotten old enough to where we listen to critics. Uh -huh. And critics have probably been saying that since before since we were ever. born. I, okay, I've been talking your ear off. It's very late. I'm sorry, man. Uh, maybe we can cut this into three episodes. What do you think? Sure. All right. Wow, can you believe we've been talking this long? Well, uh, you know... The stooped shoulders, the droopy eyes kind of make it believable for me. It has been a long time. It's <laughs> funny. Over an hour ago, I said, well, do you want to just call it a night? And do you recall what you said to me? I said it wasn't late enough yet. That's now, right. Well, yeah, you said that if, if I went home right now, you would just lay awake in your bed, unable to sleep. And so I'd like to think that I've done you a favor. You did. Getting you from there to here to where you can now have a comfortable sleep. There you go. And I've done the same service to all of our listeners. <laughs> That's right. So hopefully uh, some of them haven't fallen asleep while driving to work, which I'm always close to doing. It's a good thing I don't listen to our show when I'm going to work very much because it could be dangerous. <laughs> I need to put in many more profanities then. Yeah, there you go. Shock I, my system. I need to put in the scary drone Ooh, sometimes. Yeah, that would, that would be <laughs> creepy. Like, All of a sudden. I'll, I'll go back and put the scary drone in when I start talking about mystique and see if that <laughs> creeps you out when you hear it. All right? All right. Dude, I could talk forever, as you know, about things that I'm super passionate about. And for sadly, movies and comics and the few books I've read and, <laughs> and writing are things that I'm passionate about, uh, stories I'm passionate about. I guess all of those are stories. And so it's cool that we have an hour every week that we can talk about that stuff. Yeah, we can just blow it, waste that time away. Was it a waste? Okay, I'll be nice. It was fun and good, oh, okay. useful, oh. and constructive. Okay, now you're overselling. <laughs> All right, hey folks, this has been Rich Outfield. And I was Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening. Good night. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. The, uh, this is just us talking. The girl that they've cast as Mystique, as baby Mystique in this, was the girl that was in Winter's Bone. Yeah, I saw Lawrence. they were they were interviewing her. Jennifer uh, Lawrence. And her. she's cast as really? the main character in those Hunger Games flicks, Katniss Everdeen. Oh, really? And a, a bunch of people are pissing and moaning about that. And I'm just like, dude... She got an Oscar nomination for her first movie. Thank Christ you've cast an actress in this role and not just some tween Disney princess, dude. I, I, I could not be more thrilled than if they cast my niece.